go. What's going on, everybody? It is Wayne coming to you guys from Power. Today, we will be talking about STI 101. Last time we did a review on HIV 101, we like to follow up with STI 101 because they go hand in hand. They are both um, sexually transmitted infections, which is what STI stands for, or which is um, it, it's also known as, or formerly known as STDs, which is sexually transmitted disease. The, name, the reason for the name change is because all sexually transmitted infections are not diseases. However, all sexually transmitted illnesses are infections. So, the first one we're going to talk about, and the most commonly one that um, there is, is chlamydia. So, um, sexually transmitted infections can be um, contracted through male or female, and they can both be passed through male or female. So, what is chlamydia? Like I said, it's one of the most commonly sexually transmitted infections. It, um, there are multiple symptoms of chlamydia. Chlamydia is a curable sexually transmitted infection. Um, they have, excuse me, there can be a discharge from the penis or the vagina, which is shown here. That discharge can be white, green, yellow, any color. Um, males do not discharge at all. So if you are discharging, that is a symptom of a STI. Um, um, females do discharge however it is should not have an odor to it and it should not have a color so if it is discharged if you are discharging more than number more than normal or it does have a color or an odor that is also a symptom of the STD or STI um, you can have oral chlamydia vaginal chlamydia penile chlamydia and anal chlamydia Vaginal and penile are the front parts of the male and female um, sexual reproductive system. Um, the anal is your back end or your butt, and oral is your throat. So if you are contracted orally, your symptoms would be um, soreness of throats, redness, swelling of the tonsils, um, white patches in the back of the throat, pus, or um, a lot of color like mucus. So that shows you right there the spots and everything um it doesn't have to get this severe this is severe it can be just sore throat redness in the back of your throat as well um chlamydia can also give you blisters it can break you out around the mouth it can break you out on the genital area as well so like i said with chlamydia um you can have abdominal pains um itchiness um burning sensations when you urinate um those are the same symptoms for another STI, which is also very much common as chlamydia. It's called gonorrhea. So a lot of people mix up the two because they do have similar symptoms and they do have, um, they're, they are very much similar in their symptoms and the way they affect the body. So with gonorrhea as well, there will be discharge in the male and female um, vaginal area or the penile. The penile area um the penis would discharge or the vagina would discharge either one um you can pass gonorrhea through your eyes so a lot of people like to do um facials that's ejaculating on the face um or if a or if an infected mother is giving birth and she is not treated she's infected and she um passed through the vet the baby fat passes through the vaginal canal then they could possibly pass um gonorrhea into the baby's eyes which can make you blind if untreated um and it can blind babies at birth um you can only pass it sexually i know i'm going back and forth but um sexually transmitted infections are only passed if you have something so if zero plus zero cannot equal zero if you have nothing no matter what you're doing unprotected or protected you cannot create nothing out of something and pass anything someone has to be infected in order to infect you so if you do contract the sti someone gave it to you. It was nothing that um, just created itself in your body. It was definitely passed through sex. Gonorrhea can also um, affect the throat as well. Pus, redness, swelling. The second STI we're going to speak on is syphilis. There are three stages of syphilis. Syphilis is now one of the other most common STIs, especially in the D.C. area, we have had an uprise in syphilis. There is not a lot of syphilis testing because a lot of areas just test for gonorrhea and chlamydia. Um, back to gonorrhea and chlamydia really quick. 
when you guys are doing gonorrhea and chlamydia checks, um, like I was saying, a lot of areas just test for gonorrhea and chlamydia. At our office, we do a urine sample for gonorrhea and chlamydia. So just because your urine sample came back negative does not mean you're negative for gonorrhea and chlamydia. If you are doing unprotected oral, oral sex or unprotected anal sex, you can contract chlamydia in those areas as well. Those will not necessarily show up on your urine test. You have to do an anal swab and you have to do a throat swab. The anal swab is a Q-tip. You stick it in your butt, you twist it, pull it out, then they will send it off. The same with the throat. You stick a Q-tip in the back of your throat, they swab the throat, they send it off to a lab, um, the same way they would send off your urine sample as well. So if you are sexually active in the throat or the um, or in the anal area, you need to be getting checked for that as well because you can be um, carrying something that you do not know because the doctors do not necessarily automatically check if you do not let them know that you are orally or anally sexual. Or orally or anally sexually active. So, so like I was saying with syphilis, there are three different stage, stages of syphilis. In your first stage, you will start having symptoms between three to um, three days to three months three days or 90 days which is three months so that is the exposure to it right so that is a small painless sore so wherever i incurred this infection it can be internal which can be inside the vagina inside the anus um it can be um inside the penis head it can be inside the throat it's a painless sore unless you are a type of person who likes to examine yourself with flashlights and stuff like that you will never notice it because like i said it is a sore however it is painless so you will not feel it so after the first so if you're not getting tested you will not catch it by the time it hits stage two which is four to ten weeks after the initial after the initial infection most people will definitely catch it because your body starts creating a rash we're developing a rash so with the rash being said um you'll be able to see it it's on the hands it can be on the face it can be on the arms it can be anywhere however this rash has now become contagious so now syphilis has turned from sexual contact to just contagion any um in general so if you shake someone's hand anywhere the rash is you can pass syphilis to a person they will um begin contracting syphilis and they will start the whole stages so stage three is basically three to 15 years after um you've been infected now most people don't go that long because most people get at least a sti checkup at least once a, a year now um once it has hit stage three anything that happens after stage three is no longer curable and no the, it starts damaging and the damage is no longer reversible so it affects internal organs so it corrodes your organs it can shut down different organs as far as livers as far as anything it, it eats away at things um, so it can eat at your brain causing um, epileptic, epileptic seizures you can also um, get dementia from it um, your body parts can corrode the clitoris can fall off your penis can fall off anything can fall off syphilis eats away at the body mm -hmm. and deteriorates the body and like I was saying whatever damage it does it cannot be reversed so it can be treated and it can be cured. However, syphilis has antibodies. Syphilis is an antibody. So the antibodies of syphilis will always show up in your system when you are tested for syphilis. However, it does not necessarily mean that syphilis is active. It could be just dormant. However, the antibodies will always show, but always get tested. All right. Our next one is public lice, also known as crabs. So, public lice is extremely contagious. It can jump from you. Um, they jump. Um, you can pass it through sexual contact, standing naked in um, a foot of someone, because like I said, they can jump. Um, sharing un undergarments as far as underwear, um, because they can live in the underwear. Once you put them on, you'll if you put someone else's underwear on that was infected with crabs, you will now have crabs. Um, what they do is they bury themselves in the hair and they hide in your hair so they're always constantly digging which makes them which makes it extremely uncomfortable and itchy so a lot of people are always scratching with crabs because they're always digging they're microscopic so you will not see them so you can contract them from sitting on a toilet seat from someone who just sit on um it's very common to contract it in public areas because like i said a lot of people sit on the toilet seat they jump they it's very easy to pass that way um if you do shave your pubic hair and you have lice the license they hide in the pubic hair they will begin burying themselves in your skin and the hair follicles um or in the hair where the hair grows out of um the 
lice would start digging themselves in there. In this picture, you can see little black marks. Those are the lice in the hair. Um, if it is a lot of them, you will see this area on fairer skinned people, but the darker, the more melanated you are, the less likely you will be able to see the marks. Um, you can see the droppings in your underwear if you are extremely infested with lice, uh, lice um, well, pubic lice crabs. If you're extremely infested with them, um, they will have droppings in your underwear, which can be white or black. Um, you'll see them. So yeah, um, how you get rid of that is you take medicine and um, you can take a shampoo and wash everything away. So everything that I have spoke of as far as chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, crabs, all of that is curable, which means that will go away. There is a restraint resistant um, strand of gonorrhea, however, which means that they can, they have not found, a, it is resistant for the medicine. So um, they try to let you know to try to wrap it up as much as possible. If you do contract gonorrhea, try to not contract it again, because like I said, you do not want to get the re, uh, medic, the um, resistant strand because it is resistant against the medication. So the three that I'm about to speak of now are treatable. They are not curable. Um, anything that begins, any STI that begins with the H is not curable. As we spoke about HIV, it is treatable. However, it is not curable. The second um, largest STI that is treatable but not curable is herpes which is herpes simplex virus one, which is ASV1, which is oral herpes, and herpes simplex virus two, which is genital herpes, um, HSV2. So oral herpes is in the mouth area. Those are blisters, open sores. Um, they can be on the outside of the mouth and the inside of the mouth. Um, genital herpes is on the genital area. It can be inside the vagina, on the outside of the vagina, um, on the penis. Um, they're blisters, they're open sores, like I was saying. Herpes only um, flare up during an outbreak, so you can only contract herpes once there's an outbreak. What causes the outbreak? There's many things that can cause the outbreak. There's nothing specific. It can lead anything from stress to sexual contact to anything can cause an outbreak. Um, so what do you do in the moment that you do have an outbreak? You do not have sexual contact with anyone because, like I said, that is the way to pass it. If you do not have an outbreak, you cannot pass it. Um, you go to your doctor. They'll give you medication that will um, expedite the healing process of it. So like I said, it cannot be cured, but the um, sores can heal and go away, and they will give you a cream or a pill, which will help the antiviral, it's the antiviral drug they will give you, which will help expedite the healing process of it. So like I was saying, you'll always have this. Um, so um, don't let people kiss babies, because a lot of people don't know. It could be as simple as the cold sore. It could be anything. So it's very common. HSV1, which is oral herpes, is more common than genital herpes because, like I said, a lot of people can contract it when they're children just from a simple touch, a simple kiss. Um, so a lot of people try not to let people get all over babies and stuff like that. And if you do, just make sure you are examining the area before you're sexually active. And that's oral-wise. If there's bumps on the mouth, avoid oral sex, avoid kissing. If there's bumps on the vagina and stuff like that, avoid sex altogether or bumps on the penis, avoid sex altogether. Like I said, it will be open sores, blisters, and everything. It's very, very noticeable. You just have to look. So the other one is hepatitis. So hepatitis A and C are not curable. They are treatable. Hepatitis B does have a cure that they've just began. Um, so what is hepatitis? Hepatitis can be contracted sexually. Um, it affects the liver chronically immensely like affects the liver. Um, you can contract it also through contaminated food, through fecal matter as well. So um, it affects the liver, which causes the eyes to turn yellow, the skin to discolor as well. So if you see him, his skin is extremely yellow, his eyes are yellow. If you see him, um, this is on a fair pigmented person, this is on a more melanated person. If you see him, his eyes are extremely yellow, his skin hasn't changed too much, but um, his eyes are extremely yellow. It can also cause jaundice. So the last um, STI we will be speaking on is genital warts, HPV. So genital warts is similar to herpes. The difference is it is not an open wound. There aren't blisters. They are more wart-like. They're bumps. They look like cauliflower. They're, they're discolored as well. So they're, um, they lighten up to your skin. So they will... Um, they are 
some of them are skin colored, but um, they're pink or hyper pigment pigmented. So it could make your skin look like cauliflower. For instance, she is melanated. If you can see, this is all, this is her vagina. All of this is HPV. Those are little bumps and they um, actually turn white from the skin as well as over here. I'm not sure if you can see it too well, but on the penis in the scrotum area, which is the ball sack, um, there's little bumps as well. Those are all warts. So like I was telling you, with herpes, you have to have an outbreak. With warts, once you've contracted warts, you cannot get rid of warts unless you have them surgically removed. They will not go away. They will not... Um, just, they will not just only pop up for outbreaks once you have once they started growing they will always be there and they um, once they touch other people and things like that mm -hmm. that is how they um, are transmitted so if you do see bumps on people and stuff like that please be mindful to um not be sexually active with that person mm -hmm. i was going to say cover up um but yeah, the only way you can remove these are sex or surgically. It is extremely expensive, extremely painful. You do not want these. Um, so please be mindful when you are having sex just to look out in the areas. Like I said, sometimes it's good to play a little game with them, a flashlight game or something, just to make sure. Because a lot of people like to have sex in the dark. Um, but you also don't want a moment of darkness to be a lifetime of burden. Mm. Everything is treatable. However, like I was stating before. Or of anything that starts with the H is only curable. Um, make sure you guys stay safe this weekend. I want to thank you guys for joining us again. It has been great. Stay safe, stay quarantined, and stay wrapping it up. We will catch you guys next time.